Hey everyone, welcome to Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. This week is the week of Thanksgiving that I'm recording this. I'm recording this on the Monday night of Thanksgiving week. And I uh, just wanted to say there's not going to be any new breaks on the channel this week. Um, you probably saw the uh, SGC grading reveal that we posted on Monday. Uh, we'll be pu- putting this up on Wednesday morning. Um, I wanted to uh, do something a little bit different this week and talk about the cards I love and the cards that I'm thankful for, the cards that made me into the baseball fan that I am today and helped shape me as a person, honestly. Um, we're going to look at, I think I picked out seven cards from uh, my long-term collection. They're all from the 1970s, which is the decade before I was born. I was born in the 1980s. Um, and they're all very special to me. Um I am going to be sending these cards off for grading at PSA this week. They are doing a special for 1970s cards. And to me, these cards, sending them off to be graded is about protecting them forever. Um, It has nothing to do with um, any intention on my part to sell them. Uh, They will not be sold at any point uh, as long as I have anything to say about it uh, in the future, in the near future. They uh, They are very special to me. I want them to be... I want them to be protected in the state that they're in um, because you never know what can happen. And so uh, I will be sending these cards off to PSA this week, and I wanted to share them with you before I do that. Um, You will see them when they come back, and we'll see what the grades are. But I just wanted to run through these cards that are so special to me that I am so thankful for. Before I get to it, I I do want to mention the thing that I always mention at the end of the episodes, which is please check out the link in the description of this video. Uh, for the list of nonprofits and charities that uh, are very important to us here at Waxpack Wisdom. It was the whole reason why I started doing this in the first place was to talk about cards, but also at the same time, raise awareness for important uh, causes, at least ones that are very special and important to me personally uh, and to my wife, Abby, uh, my co-founder here. And uh, it would just mean a lot to us if you could check those out and and consider making a donation during this time, during this, this holiday season, uh, especially. So thank you very much for checking that out. And I want to just also say again, I am so thankful to everybody who has checked out Wax Pack Wisdom since we started at the end of June. This has, uh, we've, we've grown uh, more than I ever expected. We're already at almost 100 subscribers. We're at about 70, 75 now. We have over 5,000 views on our videos. It's just phenomenal. It's phenomenal to see. And again, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you for, 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 for being there, for checking us out. And um, so with that, I, let's talk about these cards. So again, these are long-term members of our collection. Uh, my dad and I bought these cards in the mid nineties and they've been with me ever since. So the first card that you see here is uh, the final tops issue Willie Mays card. Uh, it came out the year after he retired. He played in the 1973 World Series with the Mets. This is a 74 tops card. Infamously, Willie Mays had a tough time in the 1973 World Series, and then he did not play again after that. But this is his. This was for a long time. Was the you know for a while there? This was the only Willie Mays card that I had. This is a very special, important card to me because of who it is, because of the fact that it is a uh, Willie Mays's last tops issue card of just him. Uh, from the 1974 Topps set. Um, and of course, the Mets lost the World Series to the, the Juggernaut A's um, in 1973. The next two cards are rookie cards that I'm going to be sending off. And this is a very special card to me personally. I am, if you saw the SGC grading video that we posted on Monday, you saw the Molitor Trammel rookie card. Um, I never had that card as a kid, but I did have this card and the next card that you're going to see, which are other 78 Topps rookies. Of course, Lou Whitaker, uh criminally not in the hall of fame which uh hopefully that is rectified while he's still alive it would be terrible if it was like a nelly fox situation where one of the best second basemen of all time is kept out of the hall of fame during their lifetime and uh i hope he gets in so i i was always thankful to have this rookie card of his though because he was such a a phenomenal player and somebody that i looked up to um, I played middle infield as a kid. I played second base. I played second base in high school too. I just I loved Lou Whitaker. Um, and he and again, he's also a character. I've mentioned this in previous videos. Check out some of the stories about about Lou Whitaker uh, from his playing days. The next is a Hall of Fame rookie card of from 1978. Also, and this is Jack Morris. Of course, Jack Morris was not uh, in the Hall of Fame until very recently. 
I have some maybe controversial opinions about whether or not he is really deserving of being in the Hall of Fame. It does not take away from his accomplishments. Jack Morris was a top-notch pitcher, mostly pretty much all in the American League during his career, ace of play of playoff teams, of World Series winning teams in 1984, of course 1991 with the Twins. The performance in Game 7, one of the single greatest pitching performances ever in the history of baseball to, p- to pitch, you know, 10 innings, uh, shutout ball, just an unbelievable, a Herculean performance in a Game 7. Um, and then the, the 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 twins end up winning that game and winning the World Series off of off of his back, just the type of thing. And then he pitched also for the Blue Jays in their World Series the next couple of years, or at least the next year, I think. And he did not pitch particularly well in that series, but Jack Morris was a great pitcher. Don't get me wrong, um, and he is a Hall of Famer, and this is a Hall of Fame rookie card, so we'll be sending it off. This is a this is definitely a lower grade card. You can kind of see right around Larry Anderson's face here. There are some scratches, but still a really nice card. The next card is a higher grade rookie card of a Hall of Famer from the 70s, and it is this Goose Gossage rookie card. Look at that. A little off center, um, probably I'd say 70, I would say 30, 70, if we're looking like, you know, 30, 70, maybe, maybe even 25, 75. Uh, top to bottom isn't too bad, but that it is very sharp. This was a card that we bought um, from the Cracker Jack baseball card shop in North Conway, New Hampshire, rest in peace, when I was a kid. Uh, and it's a great card. It's a gorgeous example of a great rookie card for a Hall of Famer, one of the great closers, one of the great relievers ever in the history of baseball, none other than Goose Gossage. And uh, definitely uh, a big fan of this card and Goose Gossage kind of, we talk about colorful personalities, guys that kind of say dumb things in public sometimes, um, but he was a great pitcher, a fireballer, um, you know, someone that you could rely on late in games and, and obviously pitched a lot against the Red Sox. He was somebody that you wanted on the mound in the big spots late in games, that's for sure. And that's what he was. And he pitched for a long time. He pitched for about 20 years. Um and, you know, he pitched against the, the Tigers in the World Series in 1984. They didn't go so well. He probably, should, Dick Williams probably should have taken him out of the game, but whatever. Um, still a great pitcher and uh, an uh, honor to have his rookie card. And this will be uh, sent off again to PSA. The next, there's only three cards I think I have left here. And they're probably, they're for, at least for non-Red Sox and not car, and cards that are long-term parts of our collection. These are probably my three favorite cards in the entire world. Um, and I want to mention that the the next two cards were given to me in a shoebox of cards by the niece of Tom Seaver. And that's all, probably a whole other longer story, but um, wonderful woman named Liz. Uh, I've known her most of my life, pretty much my entire life. She, uh, you know, worked with my father and uh, she was so kind and generous and gave me a shoebox of old cards. And it had these two cards in that box. And I also want to mention that I have an autographed picture of Tom Seaver that I'll, I'll show it at some point. I'll post a picture of it. Uh, the signature is a bit faded, but uh, rest in peace to the great Tom Seaver. And, um, but these are, these are two cards that came from his niece. So I'll show you the first one here. The first one is a 1974 Mike Schmidt. This is not a rookie card. This is a second year card of Mike Schmidt. But again, this card was in a shoebox of cards that was given to me as a kid. Um, really good centering for a 74, a little bit off top to bottom. Um, the 74s are tough. I, I don't know how this is great. Again, I don't really care. It's a beautiful card. It's one of my favorite cards. A second year Schmidt. Incredible. Um, his rookie card is a three player card from the 73 set. The same. There's, I think there's really only two rookie cards, uh, Hall of Fame rookie cards in the 73 set. One is Gossage and the other is the three player rookie card with Schmidt. And Ron Say is on that card as well. So this is um, this is uh, an incredibly special card to me to have the great Michael Jack Schmitz, um, the, the for my money the greatest third baseman ever to play in the game of baseball, uh, to have his second year card. And again, this will be heading off to PSA for grading this week. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful card. The next one was also in that box of cards. Again, I want to reiterate this card was given to me. And this is what happens in in the in the hobby. Sometimes you have to, you get lucky, uh, you know the right people, but it's also a beautiful thing that that good things can happen, um, especially when you're a kid. That 
That's Ozzy Smith's rookie card. <laughs> and this has been in my collection for 30-ish years. Um, and it's a, it's a good example of it. The centering is pretty good. There's like a soft corner here. And it's not perfect, but again, it's perfect to me. Um, and I love this card. It is so special to me. You saw the SGC3 that I got that I bought recently, but this is this is not that card. This is my card that I've had for so long, and I adore this card. Um, it's and uh, and I'm so thankful for it. I'm thankful that I got to see. I didn't get to see Mike Schmidt play uh, when he was still playing, but I did get to see Ozzy Smith play while he was still playing on TV and when he was with St. Louis. And uh, just you can't beat the guy. One of the best defensive players ever so um the probably the best defensive shortstop probably of all time so the last card that i'm going to show you is my single favorite baseball card in the entire world there is no card that stacks up to it there's no card that's more special to me there's no card that's more incredible to me um and I, I think that, you know, as somebody who has just been such a fan of the game of baseball for my entire life, owning this card as a kid, getting to own this, um, just has meant the world to me forever. Um, and I just want to show you guys this card that I just can't, um, I still, in a lot of ways, I can't believe that I have it. I can't believe I've had it for this long. And it's... Um, you know, if we go back to the first card that I showed you, it's the same player. And it is so beautiful. Here it is. It's a 72 Willie Mays. The only play, the only real actual playing days Willie Mays card that I owned, uh, that we that we owned. And it is, it's a damn nice card. It still is. Again, I shout out to my dad, who I know is watching this. Um, these cards were at his house in Bartlett, New Hampshire for the last 30 years. They were in a book. You saw the book in the first My Collection video. Um, he took spectacular care of these cards, and now I've, I've, I've taken, you know, retaken kind of ownership of them. I've taken ownership of them, um, and I'm going to be taking care of them going forward. Um, this card is everything to me. It's so beautif beautiful. It's so perfect. Um, I am grateful and thankful to have it. Um, Willie is the greatest player of all time. He's the best living ball player. He's been the, you're going to hear me say this on 59 tops Friday in a few weeks. So you get to hear a preview of it. Now, the answer to the question of who is the best living, the greatest living ball player has been the same answer since around 1950. And the answer to that question is Willie Mays. And it continues to be as long as he's still with us, which hopefully he will still be with us for a good long while. Um, he did everything at the highest level. He was also a tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of humility in him, an incredible leader, um, an important voice in baseball, um, a brilliant instinctual baseball like led like like a, a literal baseball savant. Like he just uh, and just the best defensive center fielder ever, and hit 660 home runs. He would, you know, was third most home runs ever for a very long time. Uh, not anymore. He's probably around sixth or seventh now. But um, anyway, that's Willie Mays, um, and that's my favorite card in the world. And uh, I wanted you guys to see it here uh, before I send it off to be graded. Um, and again, protected and, and kept in this state and protected for forever. Um, so that's it. That's Those are the cards I'm thankful for. I wanted you guys to see them this week. Um, I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving uh, in the United States. Uh, and folks around the world, I, I wish you uh, wish you peace and happiness as well. Um, thinking about people that I'm close to that that uh, live in a, in, a, in an area of the world where things are are very difficult right now. Um, thinking about them this Thanksgiving. But um, I wanted to say that that's going to do it for this edition of Wax Pack Wisdom. Um, you know, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Tell us who, what are the cards you're thankful for. Uh, the cards that you love. I want to hear it. I love to hear about the, the cards that people love. Please let us know. Um, you know, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and again, you know, check out our our link for uh, the nonprofits and charities in the in the link uh, below in the video description. That would mean a lot to us if you would check that out. So uh, th thank you very much for watching. Happy, healthy Thanksgiving to everyone. 
Um, we will be back with a 59 Tops Friday on Friday and then back to the sort of regular breaks uh, next week. And we'll be also, we're going to be starting to do diving more into my collection, diving into the different eras. We're going to go back. We're going to do some pre-war videos pretty soon. Um, stay tuned for that. There's some really cool things uh, about that. So uh, thanks very much again for watching. We'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.